Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass and yeah. banging chicks and drinking booze no, and me. smoking I'm, not weed. Not me, I'm or, married. Yeah, well, I'm married. Jake, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> no. Off panel, off topic with Jake and Tyler. Anyway, uh, so. Let's talk about me today. Let's talk about my. No, let's time. talk about Jake, cause he's kind of a snake and oh. he's kind of late. Oh, late, huh? Uh, so this past weekend, <laughs> I love the fucking bullet. <laughs> yeah, I, I have read it. it? I have it on the line, um, rundown. Is what the fuck was Space Jam? Mm. Uh, and I, I wrote True. that. I wrote that before I watched it. Oh, and I think the sentiment still sits <laughs> as the same because. Uh, I've seen one of the, one of the reviews made me laugh because uh, honestly, coming into this, there are some people that are big defendants of the first movie, and look, I get it. Uh, it's never it, seen it. It's a well, you it was it was not your demo when it came out because it came out in '96. I think yeah. I have uh, a lot of my friends. Uh, a lot of friends my age um, are huge defenders of Space Jam. In really? fact, when I talk to people my age and they're like da da da, and I go, "I've never seen Space Jam," they look at me like I like I just like. Well, you're not. Their you're really not missing anything. <laughs> I know that, but it's such a beloved cult. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It, I work in sports radio too, it's so a, it's a nostalgic thing. Yeah. It, it really is. Yeah. And, I grew up with that movie. I watched that movie a lot as a kid, and I, you know, I, if I had seen it when I was a kid, maybe you know what I mean. It's just well, I just never got that, around. It was to a it. part of that Michael Jordan craze of the '90s, yeah. and that was probably the peak of it because that's when he was coming back to uh, I, basketball. I watched all six championships when I was a kid because uh, it was fun to see. Um, but uh, yeah, for yeah. some reason, when that came out, I was like, I'm not really interested in Looney Tunes or basketball. And it just missed me. But anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going in with extremely low expectations because I'm one of those <laughs> people that um, enjoys the movie for what it is. Like, I enjoy it for that that 90s cheese. Right. But that's it. It's I, part of the charm. Uh, yeah, it's not a movie that, like, oh, man, I fucking love it. You know, It holds up so well. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't. <laughs> It's it's a it's a stupid movie. It's a, it's a why nice little why, 90s time capsule yeah, kind of right. And I saw the trailer for this movie, and I remember watching it, going, "Huh, well, that's fun. That's a fun take." Like, because this is over twenty years after the first movie. It's LeBron, so the, it, it's it already has those negative connotations with it because mm. um, people just don't like LeBron James, and honestly. When you're when you're the face of a uh, uh, a league for over, an entire professional sport for well over a decade, you're the face of the sport. Almost two by now. Yeah, uh, you know it, it's bound to happen. You know it's there's going to be haters, yeah, and that's not even you know touching you know the politics behind it. Oh, we, yeah. And we won't. No. Nope. Um, so it already has that negative connotation to it. I think it's another thing where it's like, oh great, we're going back to another random '90s property and we're making a sequel and it's just a nostalgia grab and it is all of those things yeah it's not a good movie uh, space jam a new legacy is not a good movie uh, but it's about as good as a movie as i expected it to be okay fair so i didn't leave the movie disappointed i didn't sit there and be like oh well that's a fucking travesty to this space jam name mm. i'll i'll be totally honest with you it is a little frightening to watch if you're someone like me because it's almost like you see all these properties <laughs> in one movie and you start to think oh, hey God. maybe we shouldn't keep letting companies do this because this is a lot of property i heard rick and morty was in it at one point yes there's, and, there's uh, a rick and morty cam there an if, out- if there's a warner brothers property it's in this movie. There was an outcry <laughs> about it and uh what ended up happening was they talked to uh, Justin Roiland and they said you know how much did you get for it and he said I didn't get shit uh, unfortunately um, the likeness of Rick and Morty is owned by Warner Brothers like they own the show yeah. but if they want because Warner Brothers distributes it they basically used it without asking them and they had no legal recourse because of whatever contract shit yeah. so he was like it's fine <laughs> but no I didn't <laughs> I didn't want that but anyway. yeah 
Well, I'm sure he's not going to complain because no. they put a lot of he gets a lot. I'm sure he gets a lot of money merchandising. Dude, yeah, fucking a man. I bought a goddamn box of fucking Rickos <laughs> with the with the Funko Pop inside. Nice. They were not good. Yeah, usually those Funko cereals aren't good. Uh, no, but they're brightly colored and no, taste like chalk. I, you know, I went in with the expectation of, of, of that. It's just like, I'm just going to enjoy this movie for what it is. And if I don't like it, I don't like it. If I have, if I laugh at a few jokes, mm-hmm. that's good enough. Um, LeBron, I think does. People said he, they feel like he was, some people said his, he was sleepwalking in his performance. Some people hate it. I think it's fine. I think the we thing. Talk, we talked about this yesterday. Yeah, the thing with with these movies, with with the first one and with this one, they're athletes. They're not actors. They're mm. not built to carry a scene. So, yes, I can understand there's a little bit of a drop off when there's supposed to be an emotional moment between him and his son in the movie. It might not work as well mm. as is anything else when he's with the Looney Tunes because they can just bounce off him. He's just the straight man in this. And I think he, I think he did okay. What do you say? All the Looney Tunes are homos. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Great. Now we're canceled. Yep. You fuck. You ruined everything. No, and so the, the premise of this. There will be money for that. The premise of the first movie mm-hmm. is that these, these um, aliens. Well, on, they got to save like the planet or well, something. Well, these aliens are, they, they have an amusement park or, and mm-hmm. nobody wants to come to their planet. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, we need an attraction. Let's get Michael Jordan mm-hmm. for some reason. And so they're doing it. Or no, they want to get the Looney Tunes and. Or I don't remember. I don't fucking remember. Where, yeah, the, re- the point of the plot is <laughs> you're like talking about it Michael like it's Jordan, fucking war and peace, and it's like just Michael you know, Jordan and Looney Tunes are playing a basketball game so they don't become slaves on an alien planet. See, that, one it, sense. Yeah, this one, um, it's a <laughs> it's a mixture of like Tron and uh, the Lego movies. Oh. In a sense that it's a- acknowledging these properties exist in another yeah, w- kind of world. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, LeBron and his kid get sucked. See, Lego Movie did it cleverly <laughs> with all those properties. Yeah. yeah. Um, so LeBron and his son, uh, there's something, the the algorithm, which is called Algae Rhythm in this movie. It's played by Don Cheadle, which I'll give you the, I'll give him this. I've heard Don Cheadle is like the lone bright spot is the review. Don whatever. Cheadle fucking crushes it in this movie because like he knows how ridiculous this movie is and it's just like Jim Carrey uh, in Sonic mm. where they know how ridiculous they need to be to elevate it to make it a, a, a more fun property so he is, is Sonic any good? Oh, Sonic's a great movie. Really? I, Sonic is so, <laughs> Oh it's great. It's fucking sorry me. I'm going to backpedal immediately. It's Castle it's, Boring Girl. It's good for what it's trying to do. I think it's one of the better video game movies. Come back to me when you're done with your thought about that. Yeah. Finish your thought though. But no, what I'm saying is he's just munching scenery. Like he is fucking <laughs> devouring it. And honestly, Don Cheadle is such a good actor and so charismatic that you, you like it and you enjoy it. And he really is the uh, foundation for this movie. Like the whole movie relies on his fucking chicanery and, and, and it's, it's, it's enjoyable. Yeah. Um, but the whole plot is LeBron and his son have a meeting with Warner Brothers and the algorithm, algae rhythm, <laughs> uh, he makes a video because he's like, how do I, and it's just, it's same setup as the first movie. How can I make this bigger and better than it needs to be? Because he's like the head of Warner 3000. It's in this, in what he calls the server verse, <laughs> which what the fuck? And he's like, well, I know I got to get LeBron James on board. He's an international star. He's the face of the NBA. You know, like, we got to get this guy. We got to get the king, you know? Mm-hmm. So he makes, his my, whole, uh-huh. yeah, he makes this whole video appealing to him that like, hey, we'll scan your likeness and digitally put you in movies. You don't even have to show up. That's cool. We could just do that. And he's like, LeBron's like, I don't, this, this is a terrible idea. I don't yeah. like this. Yeah. And so the algorithm's listening in because he's like, he's like the AI to the whole entire mainframe of Warner Brothers. What the fuck ever. Uh, <laughs> hey, is Don Cheadle in this movie? Yeah. 
So then, then he somehow like manipulates the elevator, gets them to the server room. They go into the server room, mm-hmm. and he sucks them into the server verse. And then he's like, "Hey, it's so weird. I got so your son, and you want your son back, LeBron? You got to build up a basketball. You got to play me in a game of basketball." And he's like, "All right, fine, because this is a, we'll accept this at this point." <laughs> so then he goes to Tune World. Talk he, about suspending your disbelief. Yeah, he goes to Tune World, meets up with Bugs, and he's like, "Where are all the other Looney Tunes?" And he's like, "They all got persuaded by Don Cheadle to go to other." fucking universes in the server verse so nobody wants to hang out with me anymore and he's like well that's sad let's go get get a team together and lebron does the right thing because he's like hey i'm in warner brothers let's get fucking superman let's get batman <laughs> and then bug bunny's like no no i got the perfect team and they literally just recruit all the looney tunes and he's like what the hell man i know man there's a really cool sequence where they go to pick up lola bunny and it's inside a wonder woman comic book so that was pretty cool because yeah. the art style changed and it looked like a like a motion comic kind of, and it, but it still kind of kept the art style. Mm-hmm. I'll give them credit. Some of the animations in this are really cool. I'll give them that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then we go ahead and form the team. Whenever we get to the game, oh, mm-hmm. uh, the whole time LeBron's like basketball is about fundamentals. It's not about jerking around and having fun and then guess what you know what happens they learn that hey basketball should be fun and you should be yourself that's the whole fucking moral of this story anyway they do up the game and then the game gets and then the movie goes in a direction i'm like i don't know about this he goes hey we need to upgrade you and so the two-dimensional looney tunes become three-dimensional and while the animation looks good on them it's still weird creepy as fuck and I know I'm like sitting there thinking because su- you saw some- Lola Bunny in her shorts and you're like, fuck, yeah, no, they desexualized her for this. That's probably good. No, but you know, there were some idiots online bitching about that. I'm like, of course you are, because you can't jerk off the Lola Bunny, you sicko. Y- <sighs> you know, that's who those guys are. Uh, I don't want to kink shame. I don't want to live with these people on my planet. I'm just, hey, I don't want to kink shame. I'm just saying. No, it's you should. Ch- it's when you're a, talking about it, it's yeah. in a child's property. I'm, it's in a child's movie. Like Look, it's a family movie. Come based, on. Based on the shit that comes up when I even open a porn site, okay, there's plenty of cartoons out there for you there, guys. You don't need Lola Bunny. Yeah. Or Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, yeah, so the, they. I just they, admit <laughs> that I jerked off. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? Uh, yeah, hey, I don't feel so bad. So the, I, I, I just, I, uh, and when you get to the, 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 the big problem I see online, and I agree with in this movie, and again, wasn't expecting much from this movie, mm. but where I think it does let it, where it's not as fun, is doing the property jumping and picking up the Looney. T- it's a fun idea in mm-hmm. the first few, but the execution is pissy. Well, like the, the, when they go and get Daffy Duck. It's a great reveal because it's in Metropolis. It's got the Superman animated series music. It real, and then you see the big S, and you're like, "Are they really gonna catch up with Superman?" And then it's revealed to be Daffy. Like, awesome! That was a funny. I s- loved those cartoons when I was a kid when he became Superman. Yeah, well, or we, Super we Duck. Gr- remember when he was Green Lantern? Oh. It was Duck Dodgers, and he became the Green Lan- He met up with the Green Lanterns. What, <laughs> what movie was that? It was some Duck Dodgers thing. It was like a it was like a cartoon. Like it was the series. That'd be cool as fuck. But anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> uh no, like that was great. But then after that it's like, okay, let's just like cause the pacing is so disjointed in those sequences where they're jumping franchises. Yeah. Like they just immediately jump to a scene with inside If Aust- you're gonna do a montage, you have to have all the montage set pieces to be approximately the same length of time. Yeah. If you go and do like you're talking about with Daffy Duck and spend like five minutes doing that. And then the next one is like 10 seconds. Well, th- yeah, that's the thing is you're going to be discombobulated. The introduction to Bugs and Cha-ching. Daffy. First yeah. of all, the first time you even see a loony, t- first time you see Bugs Bunny is like 30 minutes into the movie, huh? which is too long. Right? Because you see, yeah, it's, I just think the pacing's is disjointed. And then you're right because the getting the bugs together and then getting Daffy, those are together like i don't know 10 20 minutes of the movie right and then you're right and then we go in this breakneck speed to fill out the rest of the team and then lola bunny gets her own giant right. montage yeah you don't so you're like okay so clearly these are the important characters look if you look if you want to do that that's fine but make all the long yeah. ones at the beginning and, and then do so because the, yeah. i totally get it because they're in the spaceship they're talking because they steal marvin uh marvin the martian's spaceship awesome and they're floating around the server verse getting these characters they're like they're talking on the ship 
Bugs like spins the the chalkboard, and then it just shows Austin Powers' face going, "Yeah, baby!" And then it goes into the scene from The Spy Who Shagged Me, where they introduce Mini Me. But instead of what? Me, so instead of Mini Me, it's fucking Elmer Fudd. <laughs> And then the naked cat that he's holding is Sylvester. And he goes, what are you doing here? And he's like, Thuffer and Thuckatath. And then, fuck it. They're on the team now. Let's go to the next scene. And then they go to like this Casablanca scene. And it's Yosemite Sam playing the piano. And it's like, no, I'm, ch- and you think I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> this explanation is the same speed. This is real time explanation. Like this is how fast the fucking montages pick up in this one no! s- part of the movie. No, you got to stop because I'm sorry. No, you gotta you gotta get ready because there's more. Oh, God. <laughs> no, you weren't saying like enough of that. You were saying like, dude, you're gonna want to save some of that. Yeah, hold back a little. Okay. No, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just realized what the review that I read was you, talking about. You didn't hear this part. They go to the Matrix. They 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 use a joke from 2001, my friend. They find Granny in the Matrix, dressed up as Trinity. No, come and on. she does the move where she jumps up and time stops, and they spin the camera around and she kicks the dude in the face. And that's how they end the montage sequence. That's before they get Lola. Because they're like, we need one more. And then they do the Lola bunny scene. Which, again, was cool. I liked her scene. Um, It was just unbelievable. And then we finally... And this is what I was trying to get at. So So they butchered their own movies by shoehorning fucking cartoons into them. Wow. Fuck you, Warner Brothers. Continue. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, it, it, this movie is like capitalism, the movie. It, it really is a two-hour advertisement for... That's funny if you want to... Subscribe to HBO Max. I guess, Look at all these great properties I we have. Yes, man. That's really what it is. It's a two-hour HBO Max advertisement. Jesus. Which is fine. I like HBO Max. Um, so I have some thoughts whenever you are... Well, whenever and this, you is, and this the, is the thing I want to point out. Yeah. For the people that want to say that this movie is just a bullshit commer- two-hour commercial, mm. so is the first movie. Yeah. Both these movies exists to elevate the careers of Michael Jordan and yeah. LeBron James to set up a thing like, hey, this could be a career path for me after basketball because LeBron's getting it up there in age. He's going to be retiring in a, probably a few years. You're not discovering the next Citizen Kane he, he, if you go see this movie, folks. No, but he's just trying to say like, hey, maybe he's not leading man material, but you could probably stick him in a comedy like they did in Trainwreck or you could put him on a team, you know. Like, you could even stick him in as like a random thug in a in a superhero movie, like a Marvel movie. Because everybody... Oh, he's a thug, huh? No. You know, henchman, <laughs> <Yeah>. henchman. <laughs> no, um... No, so I'll wrap yeah. up by saying yes. I get that. That part of the movie, which is unfortunately a majority of the movie, mm-hmm. uh, I can see why that doesn't work for a lot of people. Because mm-hmm. I, I understand. Like, I hate when movies are just reference fests. And... Mm. That isn't the part that I like about this movie. The game itself, when they finally play the game, mm. that's when the movie is the most fun. Okay. Because that's when the movie really embraces... So I should just fast forward? <laughs> well, it's just, and it's the same thing with the first movie. The best part about the, 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 the first movie is the game itself. You right. don't, yeah. you know, all this other stuff is whatever. And what's cool about it is LeBron's son in this story of, apparently creates this video game called Dom Ball, and it's like a street-style, like high-tech video game with, like, power-ups and style moves and everything. So the algorithm, he's just like, hey, I'm going to download this game into the serververse. And so when they play in the uh, climactic third-act basketball game, it is the video game of Dom Ball. So that, I thought that was really cool. And I know you're not going to watch this movie, so I'm going to spoil this for you, and I'm going to tell you the best joke in the whole entire movie. Because okay. Ashley and I are sitting there. We watched it on HBO Max. We're sitting there watching it, and she's like, do you think that Michael Jordan's going to show up in this movie? And I go, no, I don't think so. I think, and my my thing was, even if they had approached Michael, I don't think LeBron would want that. I think LeBron is, like, I'm I'm not, like, I think he's like, I'm, I'm not trying to live in Michael's shadow. Right, anymore. he's trying to carve out his own legacy. Yes, I'm doing Which a I sequel. Think he is. Yes, I'm doing a sequel to a movie he made, but sure. it's also, this is my Space Jam. This right. isn't yeah. his, right? Yeah. But <laughs> regardless, they get to halftime, and it's just like the first movie. It's a gigantic, insurmountable lead. It's like a thousand to three hundred or something like that. And um, he's like, "What are we gonna do?" And da da da. Where in the first movie, 
um, Bugs would fill up a water bottle and he wrote Michael's special stuff on it. Mm. And he's like, what, what was in there? And he goes, it was just water. You always had it in you, you know, kind of thing. And instead of that, they do this joke, which I think is the best joke of the whole movie. Because Sylvester, uh, the, you know, the cat comes in and goes, you guys, I found him. I found Michael Jordan. And they're like, what? What? And he's like, and they start, you know, like hyping it up like it's him and you just see his feet and he's like walking in and it's one of those slow pan ups. And I, I, Ashley and I both were like, it's going to be Michael B. Jordan. And then he comes through the hallway and it's Michael B. Jordan. And he's like, and then LeBron goes, that's not Michael Jordan. That's Michael B. Jordan. And then he goes, and then Porky's like, or Porky, one of them go, I think it may be Daffy or Porky or whatever, grabs Sylvester and like, you know, you met Michael Jordan. You know who that is. That is not Michael Jordan. They don't even look alike. And he goes, I thought he aged gracefully. <laughs> No, you idiot. You got Michael B. Jordan, and we don't have a Michael A. Jordan. And then I was I'll like, take Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> hey, He's a good actor. Michael B. Jordan is funny because his only thing was like, uh, he goes, I was just trying to get some popcorn, and this cat pulled me in here. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you guys got it, though. And then he like leaves. And it was the best joke of the movie because I was like, that is, that is actually a reference that's pretty funny. Like, there's some moments that are genuinely funny in this movie, but I get why people don't like it. And, and, and the best part of and it. And you spoiled all of them when you review. <laughs> There's no way to spoil that fucking movie because I don't even know. <laughs> okay, so some thoughts on the Space Jam here. Yes, real quick. Let's wrap up the Space Jam segment. Uh, the first thing is that, um, you know, sometimes these movies can be good. Like you said, Do Sonic. Jam, Space um, Jam. I was walking through the living room uh, a couple of weeks, about a month ago. Uh, when I still had a living room and I was walking through it and uh, somebody was watching the Tom and Jerry movie. Oh yeah, the one that came out with uh, Michael Pena and Chloe Grace Moritz. Yeah. I watched about 10, 15 minutes of it and it was actually kind of good. I mean, it wasn't something I would maybe sit down yeah. and watch but it wasn't like, oh, this is horrible. Yeah. Um, so there's one thought. Every once in a while, some of these movies turn out to be like, wow, that was unexpectedly really good. Yeah. You know? And then the other thing, too, is if you're, like, a really smart AI from, like, space um, and you want to get LeBron James to do something for you, okay, um, I wouldn't challenge him to a basketball game. I'd be like, hey, LeBron, are you really good at golf? <laughs> no. Are you really good at uh, building? Mole are you really, engineering? Are you really good at building Legos, LeBron? And he'd be like, I've never built a Lego in my life. And I'm like, I challenge you to a Lego build off because I would win. Yeah, but don't you want a little bit of dramatic? No. <laughs> I want LeBron to do the things that I want to do, like the AI in the space. Yeah. I'm saying, you know, if I wanted to get you to do something against your will, I wouldn't be like, hey, Jake. Will Play you that one thing you're known for. <laughs> I, I wouldn't go to you. And be like, Jake, will you jerk off a lot? Because, I mean, you got that covered. Nailed it. <laughs> We're talking about a kid's movie. Nailed too, it. By the way. Nailed it. I'd be Overall, like, hey, Jake, can if, you... Uh, if I were to <laughs> if I were to uh, put it on a scale, <laughs> uh, you know, one to five thumbs. Uh, thumbs. <laughs> up your butt. I would give it, a, I'd give it a two and a half thumbs. Not bad. It's an okay movie. Mm -hmm. If it, it's a great, it's a great hangover movie. If you're if you had a long night before and you just want to put something on, Space Jam: A New Legacy is solid because dude, where's my car? It doesn't matter what the fuck what's happening in that movie. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, it's also it's a good family movie too. I mean, if you if you have some kids and you want to do a movie night, One of those this weirdos with a family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put this on with the kids, I mean, you could do a lot worse. I think. Uh, there's, it's, it's an okay movie. Two and a half thumbs. 